Today, let's talk about this magnificent tool. This is a card scraper. It's just a thin piece of flexible metal, and it is by far my favorite tool in the entire shop. Why is it my favorite tool in the entire shop? Because it fixes all of my mistakes, and it solves a lot of problems too. It has so many uses in our shop that we're gonna do a separate video just on ways you can use this simple little tool. But today, we're going to learn how to properly prepare a scraper by generating a burr on all four long edges. So, let's take a closer look. A scraper is made of a fairly soft and flexible metal. It's soft enough to allow us to turn a burr easily, but not so soft that the burr wears out too quickly. In order to properly prepare a scraper, we have to flatten the face, and we also have to flatten the edge and they need to be at 90 degrees to each other. To do that, we're going to use a diamond stone. Now this is a 600 mesh diamond stone, and it's fine enough to generate really good results, but it's not so fine that it takes forever to get to those results. I also like using diamond stones because when you're using something like a water stone and you're trying to flatten the edge of this scraper, it'll leave terrible grooves in your water stone. So stick with the diamond stones, they work really well. So here's the procedure. We're going to lay the scraper flat on the stone and we're going to remove the old burr by placing all eight fingers across the long edge of the scraper and working in circles. You'll hear the sound change as the old burr is actually removed. Let me flip it around and do the other edge. And once you hear that sound change, Flip it over. You hear that? And there it goes. It's gone. All right, on to the edges. How do we make sure that we get consistent results when we're polishing the edge? The edge needs to be just as highly polished as the face, but it also needs to be at 90 degrees to the face. Trying to hold that in your hand at 90 degrees is fairly difficult. You can do it. You can definitely do it. But instead of trying to master that, it's much easier to build this simple jig. This is just a block of wood with a bandsaw kerf cut down the center, and I've put a screw across the two halves so that I can tighten or loosen the kerf. And this kerf is just wide enough so that our scraper slides in, and it holds the scraper securely while we polish the edge. I highly recommend using some sort of cloth on the exposed edge so that you don't cut your hands. Now we're just gonna work the jig back and forth, pressing down slightly, and also simultaneously pressing down on the scraper. And take a look at it every now and then, and you can actually visually see when you're progressing and how close you are to being finished. I can see I have a little bit of work to do right in this area here. That's got it. Now as an additional check, you can use your thumb right along the edge to feel if you've generated a burr. Now this is not the kind of burr that we want to actually use when we're doing our woodworking, but it's a burr nonetheless. It's a very fragile burr. I can feel it everywhere except right in the center, and that's very typical. When you sharpen a scraper, the center is going to be the last place that you really end up turning a burr because that's the place that you use the most during your work. We'll keep going a little bit farther. That's got it. Now, just flip the block over and do the other edge. You can see I've got a little bit of work to do here and no burr yet. This jig makes this process very simple. There it is. Okay.
Now that we've taken it out of the jig, we need to remove that very delicate burr that we created when we were polishing the edge. Again, put it flat on the stone and very gently with even pressure, work in circles until you hear the sound change. Now this burr comes off very fast. And that's really about it. Flip it over, do the other two. There we go. Now just in case somehow we manage to fold this burr back in an upright direction, let's put it back in the jig for just a second. And again, very gently, just clean that off. Yep. All right, now this scraper is ready for us to turn a burr. Now you don't have to do every one of these steps every time you sharpen a scraper. If you've just sharpened a scraper and you've been using it for a little while and it starts to get dull, you can actually go straight to the burnishing process and turn a new burr. Eventually, that's not going to work. The edge will become so work hardened that you can't turn a burr anymore and then it's time to go back through the steps from the very beginning. Now to turn a burr, you can use a burnishing rod like this one, although any piece of highly polished and hard metal will work. A burnishing rod is pretty nice because it offers you several different radiuses. The tighter radius puts more pressure on the edge as you turn the burr, and the less tight radius puts less pressure on the edge as you turn the burr. I tend to not use a burnishing rod because the result is dependent upon the angle at which you hold the burnishing rod relative to the scraper. And that is just generally inconsistent. It may be consistent enough for some people, but I actually like to use a jig in this case. Now the jig that I use really couldn't be any simpler. It's just a block of wood, again with a bandsaw kerf cut down the center, and then I've drilled a hole that's a quarter of an inch in diameter at five degrees to this face so that I can insert a broken carbide router bit. Now router bits tend to be very highly polished so they're perfect for burnishing. So now I can put the scraper in the kerf and it holds it at precisely five degrees to the bit that I have inserted in the hole. To turn a burr the first thing that you want to do is actually work hard on the edge. And we're going to do this with three or four swipes on each edge using the exposed bit of this carbide router bit. Just a few passes will do. You don't need to put a lot of pressure on it, but that actually draws the metal out, hardens it somewhat, and prepares this scraper for turning the burr. Now, let's actually turn a burr. We're going to put the scraper in the kerf. And we're going to push down fairly hard and swipe it across. Now, with your finger, you can feel the burr very easily. And the burr is actually a tiny hook. It's curved and it's very sharp on the edges. So, there's one burr. We're going to continue doing that to each edge. There's another. There's a third, flip it around, and do the fourth. Now you can actually pass the scraper over the bit multiple times to generate a larger burr. But the larger the burr you make, the more likely it is that it will deform in the cut. So larger burrs tend to just be less durable. You can take a heavier cut with a larger burr, but I can usually get the job done in one pass. I get a durable burr, and it takes a large enough shaving for most uses. Now that we have a scraper with four sharp burrs, let's take a look at how it actually cuts. In order to make a cut, you want to hold a scraper with your fingers and put your thumbs at the very bottom of the edge, push in a little bit to flex the scraper, and you're ready to go. At first, you're going to have to experiment a little bit to find the angle at which the scraper cuts best. But once you've used them for a while, every single time, you'll just naturally fall into the correct angle. And when you make a cut with a scraper, what you should see is a shaving. 
just like this. They're wispy little shavings and they just fall apart. If you're making dust, you need to go back to the sharpening routine. Cutting with a scraper generates a tremendous amount of heat. So as you're cutting, you want to learn to flip the scraper over in your hands, just like that. After you do this for a while, you'll be able to do it without missing a beat. If you use a scraper on one edge for so long that it burns your thumbs, A, you've burnt your thumbs, and B, you've probably ruined your edge by generating too much heat in the metal itself. So, learn that flip trick. It's great. Now, I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but right here, there's some tear out in this board. There's actually some here too, but let's concentrate on this spot for just one minute. One of the things that scrapers are best at is removing tear out in the face of a board. Now this tear out could be from your machines, it could be from your hand planes, but regardless, scrapers are far faster at removing tear out than sandpaper. Now when you're removing tear out from a board, don't scrape only in the spot where the tear out exists you will make a little bowl. You need to spread your efforts across the board. That doesn't mean you have to do an entire tabletop just to remove a tiny bit of tear out, but don't do this. Because as soon as you put finish on that, you will see it as a small depression in your tabletop and you'll be very, very sad. So avoid that by generalizing the scoop. I'm going to do a large area, much larger than the area of tear out itself. It's already gone by the way. So to sum up, you want to learn that flip technique to keep your fingers and your scraper from overheating. You want to be making shavings, not dust. And if you're removing tear out from the face of a board, remove it in a wide area so you don't create a depression in your board. If you're starting out with a new scraper, you're going to have a lot of work to do to polish these faces and get them ready for use. But I guarantee you, if you learn to sharpen a scraper properly, it will become one of the most valuable tools in your entire shop. Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe if you like the videos and check out DanielChafin.com.